Hi, hello, I have somehow fallen ill again. So sore throat, cough, hella congested. It's been a miserable couple of days. I've been really going through it. My voice is only like just starting to recover. So I unfortunately haven't been able to film those like really long, super chatty, like collection videos and everything that I wanted to for my makeup collection. So I've decided after drinking three cups of hot water and taking a really, really hot shower to try and get as like decongested as possible and get my voice as vaguely normal sounding as possible. So I sit here in front of you now, still kind of like vaguely sweaty from my shower. My hair is still wet. I have thrown on a lipstick and some mascara. I'm using the front camera of my phone because I'm hoping that the really, really shitty quality of it will hide the fact that I chose to wear absolutely no base makeup at all. Say hello to my good friend Dimitri over here. He just popped in the shower, so. That was fun. I didn't even bother putting concealer on Dimitri because I just asked myself like, do I want to go back to my bathroom and like double cleanse and wash my face? And the answer to that is no. I wanna film this video, wipe off my lipstick and mascara with my cellar water and go the fuck to sleep. And that is exactly what I plan to do after I finish filming this short video where I talk about two books that I read recently that I thought were really very quite good. Hi, hello, editing Prachi here. I actually ended up only talking about one book because I ran out of both sunlight and vocal cord capacity before I could get to the second book. So this video is only going to be covering Lemon by Kwon Yo Sun and I will figure out how to talk about She Said on another day when my throat recovers. And now back to hopelessly optimistic video me who thought this was going to be a short video. So without any further ado, let's get it. Okay, so the first book that I want to talk about, and it's actually the first book that I read this year. I've been doing so much reading for work, I just like don't really feel like reading when I get home. And I don't know what like bug bit me over the past couple of weeks that made me suddenly like pick books up and start reading again, but hey, we're here. So the first book I want to talk about is Lemon, a novel by Kwon Yo Sun, translated from Korean by Janet Hong. I'm one of those people who loves just like walking around my physical library and picking up books that I think would appeal to me. And Lemon was one of those books. Yellow is my favorite color. So when I saw this kind of like bright yellow cover and the name Lemon, I was immediately kind of intrigued and I picked it up. And the back of it says, Parasite meets the good son in this piercing psychological portrait of three women haunted by a brutal unsolved crime. It's a very, very short novel. It's like not even 200 pages. I think this particular edition is like 150 pages long. I read it all in one sitting and I was so like <gasps> by the ending that I immediately turned back to the first page and read the whole thing again. I don't know really how to summarize this novel. So for example, I could tell you that Lemon is about the death of a teenage girl called Heon during the summer of 2002 when Japan and South Korea were jointly hosting the FIFA World Cup. Heon was found murdered with her head smashed in in a park and no one is really quite sure who did it. But so the two main suspects are the son of this really rich guy called Shin Jung Jun um, because Heon was last seen in the passenger seat of his SUV. So that's the first suspect. And the second suspect is the guy who actually saw Heon in that SUV, a poor, slightly disabled teenage kid who worked part-time delivering chicken called Han Manu. And if I describe the story to you like that, then you're like, okay, this is like a whodunit, it's a mystery, it's a thriller, but it's like, it's really not. Like, yes, by the end of the story, you do end up figuring out like who done it. But I honestly think if you call this a who done it, you are mischaracterizing it to potential readers because it is not a who done it in the traditional sense. Because despite these like two men being the suspects, it's like not really about these two men. Because the story is actually told through like three rotating perspectives, and all three of those perspectives are of women. So first we have Kim Daon, who is the murder girl, Heon's sister. And then we have two of Heon's classmates. So one of them is Sung Hui, who despite being in the same class as Heon, actually had a closer relationship with Heon's younger sister, the other narrator, Daon. And then we also get two chapters from somebody who we eventually kind of like figure out and put the pieces together is Heon's other classmate, Taerim. And because each chapter kind of like rotates perspectives, we end up seeing the same details through a lot of different eyes. So for example, when Sang Hui, Heon's former classmate, 
meets Don after like several years have passed, she comments about how Don has like lost a bunch of weight and also had a bunch of plastic surgery in order to try and look more like Heon because Heon was considered to be like the most beautiful girl in their school. And that's our first exposure to this idea that like Don, the kind of younger ugly duckling of a sister, has had a lot of plastic surgery in order to look more like Heon. And when I was reading it, I was definitely kind of like, what the fuck? Like, did she kill her older sister out of like jealousy or whatever? And then we switch chapters, we switch perspectives, and we find out that Don was actually kind of almost pushed into getting these surgeries by her grieving mother. The, her mom really could not handle losing Hill on her precious older daughter, her most beautiful child, and she was driven into like a really deep depression in her grief. And what eventually pulled her out of it was Don getting all of these plastic surgeries to try and recreate Heon in her mind. So these plastic surgeries that as a reader you might have initially thought was like some expression of like jealousy or some other kind of like freaky stalkery type of thing actually is an expression of just deep and immense grief. And Lemon is actually full of like beautiful little details like that that come up again and again in different chapters through different perspectives and help us learn more about things and create a fuller picture of the story at hand. In addition to like the whodunit there's actually a secondary sort of like twist to this story. There's a secondary crime for a lack of better word that has like hints sort of sprinkled throughout and which is only really revealed on like the last couple of pages. But when I was like going through and reading like Goodreads reviews for this, a lot of people like missed that secondary thing entirely or if they found out about it they complained about how they thought it like wasn't well set up it just came out of nowhere in the last couple of pages and I'm like bruv were we reading the same fucking book because she mentions it at the end of the very first chapter that we ever read right like the breadcrumbs were there you were just not paying attention a lot of people on Goodreads also thought that there were only like two narrators in the book or they were like confused about who ended up killing whom and I was just kind of like this is not a book that like bonks you over the head with like a revelation like at no point are they just like this person killed this for this motivation and this is what like there's no sort of like Agatha Christie reveal of everything it's like you have to put the pieces together yourself and so you have to make sure that you were like paying enough attention during the story to be able to kind of like put the pieces together it is a book of subtlety and that's kind of why I think like characterizing this as a whodunit is like a disservice not just to the book itself but to a reader who might just be there looking for like a normal whodunit mystery because like this is not a normal whodunit. At its core I think this is really a book about death and grief and the way that like losing somebody affects all of the different people left behind. The story spans 17 years from 2002 to 2019. The chapters are not in chronological order but each one of them is marked with a date so you can very easily figure out like what came after what and it's truly about people at like different stages of their life trying to grapple with a loss of some sort. And you know despite being like a really thin novel there are a lot of different interesting themes that you can pull from this there are a lot of different angles from which you can read this so for example there's a lot going on about wealth and class and even disability when it comes to like Shin Jong Jun and Han Manu the two suspects for Heon's murder Han Manu's entire life actually also brings up some really interesting points about like disability about what it means to live a meaningful life about what it means to suffer about whether justice exists in this world at all there's also a lot to be said about like sisterhood and families and what it means to be someone's favorite child. There's obviously a lot to be said about grief and loss. There's also some really interesting commentary about the rigid beauty standards of Korea and then what that means for all of the women who are forced to partake in those beauty standards and the way they're all kind of like pitted up against each other and against this societal norm to be beautiful in a very specific narrow type of way. As I'm sitting and editing I'm realizing there's like even more themes that I could have touched on that I didn't. Like there's a lot actually to be said about like kind of almost like victim blaminess, like the way in which like a woman will just be like minding her own goddamn business but because of the way that she looks like there's this idea that she was sort of like asking for it. There's also like a whole like religious element to the story that I completely 
completely just like forgot about mostly because like I'm not a very religious person at least not like when it comes to Christianity and stuff so I was just I kind of just like zoomed over that but I guess it makes sense to like bring up religiosity because a lot of these people are looking for meaning in the face of like something terrible and tragic happening to them and religion is definitely a thing which can help a lot of people find meaning but at the same time there's a really interesting commentary on how like extreme religiosity can sometimes be used by people who are being eaten away by guilt because they have to hope that they will be like forgiven one day and so they're like taken up by the promise that Christianity has that says that everyone's a sinner but everyone will be forgiven you know and so we definitely see that with like one of the characters I might have to give this like four and a half stars instead of just four because the more I think about it the more I'm like okay Shrek like there's a lot of layers to this onion but anyway I will return you to video project now. <laughs> There's a lot going on here. Like you can find a lot in here if you want to, or you could also just read it from beginning to close and be like, well, that was interesting and leave it at that. As a person who sat down and read this in one sitting and then reread it again in that same afternoon, I actually think this would make like a really, really good movie. Bong Joon-ho would, I think, actually be like a really, really good person to direct this movie because one of his like best movies, in my opinion, is Mother. I think if you enjoyed Mother, you might enjoy this. I think if you enjoyed this, you might enjoy Mother because it has like a couple, I think, commonalities almost with Mother in that it's like, it's not about the person who's murdered. It's not even about the person who's suspected. It's about like a family member and so at its core it ends up not just being about like who actually killed the person it ends up being more about like the complex family dynamics that come from all of the people involved in the situation the other person who I think would actually do like a pretty good adaptation of this would be Pak Chanuk who is the guy who directed um Agashi the handmaiden and the reason why I think that is because both the handmaiden and lemon do this thing where they sort of like slowly drip feed the audience information you don't get an info dump at any point during the novel information is like very slowly parsed out to you and then there are these like key moments in the story where you like suddenly realize something that recontextualizes all of the information that you like thought you knew before and the handmaiden i feel does that so expertly and it also like juggles telling the story from different perspectives so expertly that i think like he'd be able to do a good adaptation of lemon either way i think if you have read lemon and you haven't seen like mother by bong joon ho or the handmaiden by pak chan -uk, you should drop whatever you're doing and go watch those two movies immediately i will say that i have like two sort of like gripes about this novel um, and it's the reason why I gave it only like four out of five stars because although I thought it was like really really good I don't know that it like knocked my socks off my first sort of complaint hi editing brought you here again I just wanted to say that I had like a whole five minute rant in here about how maybe I was a dumbass but I like didn't understand why the title of the story was lemon and now that I'm like sitting here and editing it I've had an epiphany I think the title is lemon because it symbolizes loss so first off Heon was described as wearing like a lemon colored outfit on the day that she was murdered and she's obviously like the first and biggest loss that happens in this novel the loss around which this entire novel is centered especially for Daon but beyond that I think this idea of lemon being a symbol for loss as a whole I think it goes beyond the idea of like the loss of a person because at one point Daon is having a discussion with Heon's former classmate Sanghui Daon and Sanghui had been in a poetry club together and they both had a great love for James Joyce and one of his works referenced um, a thing called lemon plat which is like a, I believe like a type of a candy and Sanghui Onni had even written like a poem about the lemon plat from James Joyce's story and when Don like years after the fact brings up this lemon plat poem Sanghui realizes that she has like completely given up on poetry and creativity which was a thing that she really really loved although she hasn't experienced the loss of a really significant person in her life the way that Don has she has still experienced experienced a loss of like joy and purpose and creativity the things which she had used to enjoy like Lemon Platt, James Joyce, the creativity of literature and poetry, it belongs to a completely different life now. And in fact, in like my little reading journal, a quote that I'd actually written down that Sang Hui says when she's reflecting on her like Lemon Platt poem is, I was trudging through life ignorant of what I'd lost. 
So I think Lemon as a whole, like the title, refers to this concept of loss and about the different ways in which people grapple with the people and things that they have lost. And I'm also just realizing as I'm sitting here now, I'm remembering that in 2014 there was like a huge disaster in South Korea. It's called the Seoul Ferry Disaster where basically like a, f a ferry sank and due to a lot of like negligence and dumbassery on the government's part, a lot of people died. I think only like 170 to 180 people survived. And as this entire disaster was unfolding in South Korea, people started using lemon yellow colored ribbons to kind of like express their grief and mourning and loss. And also the hope that they had that tons of these people who had gone missing, like their bodies hadn't been found yet, had actually somehow managed to survive. And eventually as time passed and the government continued to kind of like mess up the investigation into what had happened in this disaster and recover all the bodies and all that kind of stuff, the lemon yellow ribbons actually became like a political symbol for the injustice of the government not properly investigating this event. And so, you know, like keeping that cultural context in mind, I think in Korea, like when this book came out, I think everybody would understand that lemon yellow is like a very symbolic color that has a lot to do with like grief and loss and mourning somebody who dies in a tragedy. And at the same time, it actually also has a really interesting political parallel, which is that in the same way that the ribbons eventually came to represent the sort of anger at the injustice of this terrible half-assed investigation that the government was doing into the disaster, we can see like Daon's anger at the police basically half-assing her sister's murder investigation. And so, yeah, I figured it out. I figured it out why the book was called Lemon. At least I think so. That's, that's my best interpretation of it. And so I'm cutting out my little rant and instead inserting this little explanation here. Now back to video me talking about honestly the only real gripe that I had with Lemon as a novel. And then the second gripe, I feel kind of bad for saying this because honestly I feel like this is a, a thing that cannot be helped. I think that this is a novel where we really did lose something in translation. The thing is, Korean as a language is like functionally very very different from English. It is structurally very very different from English. There are a ton of different levels of formality in Korean that are very hard to translate. On top of that, people throughout the country of South Korea speak Korean very very differently. <laughs> when you hear somebody talking Korean, there's a lot more that you can gain from how they are speaking and the words they are using and the accent that they have than you can just from the actual meaning of the words that they are saying. And the thing is, that shit is nearly impossible to translate into English. And Janet Hong did her best, but I honestly, I think we really lost something in this book because I actually, I saw an interview on YouTube with the author Kwon Yo Sun and I'm going to see if I can like link it up in the cards and she talks about how she kind of like she loves collecting the language of different people. When there's a fight going on in a bar or on the street she always likes to pay attention to the language that people use to like insult each other because she's like it tells so much about a person the way that they talk and so I am confident that the Korean version of this book had very distinct voices for the three different point of view narrators. I know that Don and Sanghui and Taedim probably talked really differently from each other and I know all three of them probably talked really differently from Han Manu who's considered like disabled and really really lower class and the reason why I know that with 100% certainty even though I haven't read the Korean version of the novel is because there are like certain things I picked up on even while reading the English translation that I was like Oh, I know they would have had ramifications in the Korean version. So for example, there is a big point made in this story about how Heon, the murdered girl, her name at birth was actually Hye Eun. So it's a subtle difference, especially if you don't speak Korean, but essentially her name was spelled and pronounced differently. It was Hye Eun, and her dad was from this province called Gyeongsang, which is like in the southern part of the country. It has a very, very distinct regional accent and dialect, which is considered to be a very like rough form of speech. And he was unable to pronounce he un. He kept pronouncing it he on. And so they eventually ended up registering he un as he on and naming da on da on instead of da un. 
The author also takes care to point out that one of the narrators, Sanghui, is from like a totally different province than where the story takes place, right? There is also like a couple different times in the books where Janet Hong does her very best to try and describe the way that Han Manu talks and the way that it's different from the way that like an average person would talk, but because everything's being translated into English, we lose a bit of that nuance. When you are reading like the three different perspectives, sometimes it's a little bit hard to figure out whose perspective is whose right at the start. And I think it's because we lose some of the distinctive voices that the characters maybe would have had when they were speaking Korean because those nuances kind of get flattened out and aren't really properly translated into English. Although it's like a complaint I have about the novel, it's also not something that I think can really, really be helped. I honestly think that Janet Hong did the absolute best that she could. And it's also like one of the reasons why I, I kind of almost want there to be a movie adaptation for this, because you at the very least have like the visual medium to make up for like differences in personality and tell you more about a character, right? But again, not really a thing that can be helped. And um, I, I know I said I would make this video really Really, really short and I would talk about two books including she said but my voice is like really running away from me now so I think I will just leave it here I think I will just have done this one really kind of like longish review for this one book which lived rent free inside my brain for a full month after I had read it if you have read anything cool or interesting recently please leave it down below even if you read something that you felt like was a pile of hot garb, leave that down below. I'm just interested in hearing what everyone's been reading lately, if you've been reading stuff. If you haven't, but if you've watched any like good movies, leave that down below as well, because while I'm sick, I don't really know if I'll be like up for doing reading, but I'm definitely up for like watching stuff and just passing out to it. As always, thank you so, so much for watching this video, and I hope you have an amazing upcoming week. And even if the rest of your week is messy or imperfect, I hope that you're still able to create and experience some truly beautiful moments. Thanks for watching. Bye.